Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Red here with Ramen Noodle Budgets. I was originally going to film a kind of intro in person and everything, but I haven't been feeling too great today, so I decided to just voice over the entire video. So today we're going to be uh, rehauling and repainting the Trick or Treat Studios Halloween Kills mask. Um, out of their masks, I actually do feel like this is the best one that you can get stock, but for me it did leave a lot to be desired, especially when it came to the hairline, so I decided to do a couple of repaints. I actually purchased two of these masks to repaint. So the first thing is you can see, they do have the fake blood on the side from where he got shot, but it does crack off and it's a very stiff kind of paint. Um, so what I started off by doing was just using a little bit of acetone. I would actually prefer using uh, paint thinner or naphtha just to be safe, but I used um, some just basic nail polish remover to remove any of that blood. It did take a little bit of uh, elbow grease, but eventually get able to get most of it off. Um, there it is with most of it off. Like I said, the mask looks pretty great on its own, but I did want to repaint it the whole thing. So I started by actually using a hairnet, um, or it's a shower cap. I actually got these at Big Lots for super cheap. I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape just to tape the rest of it down to uh, keep the hair out of the mask. On the original stock mask, there actually was a lot of hair stuck into the hairline, like on the actual head. So I did have to go ahead and remove that. Now I'm going to use my basic mix of one to one to one part liquid latex paint and then water. So a, th a third of each part basically. So I also bought this airbrush thinner, wasn't a big fan of it, so I did stick with water. I just find it to be the best option. Um, I did also start using these condiment cups to mix any of my paint. I found it to be actually a great option. I don't know if I really discovered this, but it worked incredible for me. And I also am using some airbrush specific paints. Um, I find that airbrushing for this mask is pretty useful because of the gradient effects that you can create with an airbrush, um, but I do think you can do this all by hand as a lot of uh, individual things were done by hand. So as you can see here, I have a little bit of white paint, a little bit of yellow. I had equal parts liquid latex to the paint and then equal parts water. And the consistency I try and kind of get is milky. Um, this is especially for the airbrush. You can go a little bit thicker if you're painting by hand, but with the airbrush, you do need to keep it kind of light so you're not clogging up that brush. Now I kind of go ham with the airbrush and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not completely used to it yet. So here you can see me going a little ham, but I get a little more used to it as I go. Um, and I kind of wanted to just get a basic white or off-white yellowish cream color across the entire mask, just so I had a base to start with. Um, and a lot of you guys I see online who are doing the repaints, a lot of people are trying to get rid of the yellow. Um, the yellow is actually really important to the mask. So as you can see here, I mixed up a kind of mustardy yellow and painted it all over the other side of the mask. And a lot of you guys are be like, what is he doing? The pictures that Christopher Nelson, the man who actually painted the mask, posted, he posted on Instagram a picture that said crispy. The mask had a lot of yellowing underneath with burnt texture on top. So I do a, I'm actually going to repaint this mask twice in this video until I get the look that I like. Um, but to start off, always paint the half with all the burn areas yellow. I then mixed up a very runny uh, black wash. So it's just a little bit of black paint, a little bit of liquid latex, and a whole bunch of water so that it's very, very light. And I painted it across the entire mask. This um, actually does come from Sing, uh, Sing With Nick's YouTube channel. I find this to be the absolute best method for filling in all of these cracks and details. So I'm painting this across the entire mask, even all of the burns, and I'm actually going to let this fully dry. Once it's dry, what we're going to do is remove the paint lightly, and it's going to keep all the paint in the cracks. So the first time I did this, as you can see here, I am just painting it on with a paintbrush. The second time to get the final result, what I actually ended up doing was airbrushing it all over the mask very lightly and removing it. And that gave me a much cleaner and a much less intense look in all of the cracks on the mask. Um, and I found that to be the best look. However, this is another option and I will show you kind of what that looks like once I start removing the paint. So I started off by just using a standard um, paper towel with a little bit of water and I was kind of lightly trying to just remove as much of the paint as I could. Because I was using these airbrush paints, they stuck a little bit more than a standard acrylic paint would. So I did end up actually finding a great tool, was using some uh, alcohol pads that you would get when it comes to uh, removing um, you know, for any injuries, I would use that and lightly wipe it across the mask and it would wipe off most of the paint on top of the surface a lot easier than just using water and that kept a lot of the paint in the cracks and crevices. So if you do have any paint that is really sticking, maybe just a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol on a paper towel seems to work the absolute best. So here is the first look I got. Like I said, this came out a little more intense than I would have liked. Um, I think it looks... It wasn't really the look I was going for, but I decided to continue with it and just see where I could go with this particular, um, this style. 
So I then did use some little bit of white paint on a brush and dry brushed white on top of the mask because it did come out a little bit darker than I would have liked. Um, as you can see, the mask almost looks a little brown. So I started by just lightly dry brushing. As you can see, I got the mask a little more white. And that is the look I was intending to go for there. I then mixed up a very runny uh, brown, very similar to the wash we originally did. And I started by adding just a little bit, um, kind of a border around the mask with this brown and then patting it with my fingers and a uh, sponge brush to try and kind of do what I do with my last Halloween Kills concept mask where I kind of created a, um, a gradient up and down the mask. As you can see, I did get a very um, Halloween 2 style going on the neck. It almost looked like the flesh tone of the original Captain Kirk mask. I really did like this burn look that was going on on the burnt side of the mask. But once again, this wasn't the exact look I was going for. I then mixed up a very runny black. This was just completely, it was just black paint, nothing else mixed in. And began to airbrush around the burns just to really emphasize the burn a little bit more and to make it look extra crispy. I also added some of this on the other side just to try and almost blend so it wasn't like a two-faced look but it was like a natural progression of where the mask would have gotten burned. So this is a look, I did like this look a lot but it wasn't really accurate to the Halloween Kills mask so I ended up kind of just restarting and repainting the entire mask. So it does have, like I said, it has a very unique look to it, just wasn't exactly what I was going for. And decided to scrap. I actually went out and bought another mask just to restart completely um, to get a fresh base here. Uh, once I did have this look though, what I actually did was went back in with those um, those alcohol pads and removed a lot of the black from the top areas of the paint. I actually inverted this so what it should be is on the bottom yellow and top black. Here's with the repaint and I went uh, like I said airbrushed in those cracks and then removed it with the alcohol. I painted it yellow on this one side here and it was a little bit too dark like i said this kind of created a two-faced look but i thought that the um this side with the side with the just the details that was kind of like the original halloween 2018 look i was really satisfied with that i then also went in just to fix the hairline so um cosplay chris had an awesome idea of using just super glue on the hairline and pushing the hair forward um, this seemed to work really well but i did use a little bit of liquid latex just to kind of blend in some areas of the hairline because it did look a little weird when i first glued it down there is the mask in some natural lighting as you can see it looks really terrifying i was super super happy with the one side looked i just thought the one other side was just a little bit too dark so what I actually ended up doing was using just a little bit of that off cream white and going, went across the entire mask to lighten the entire thing. I was originally going to dry brush white all over the mask, but I didn't want to get any brush strokes in anywhere, like especially on the, uh, the burnt side of the mask. So I just did a very, very light dusting of white over the entire mask to lighten it out. Um, as you can see in the burns there, I kind of tried to uh, kind of blend everything together and what I ended up doing I decided I wanted to redo the burns a little bit more So I added a whole bunch of yellow back you guys are like ew, that's why it looks disgusting It's what a lot of people try to avoid with the Halloween kills mask But it is there in every photo I've seen of the actual mask and what I did here is like I said I inverted it I took I uh, actually uh, dry brushed black paint on top of the yellow areas so that the black paint just stayed on top of those high spots So it looked like it was burnt crispy with the yellow kind of melted latex underneath. For the blood, I used a standard effect. You can use something known as perma blood, but I kind of made my own, and this has worked great for me over the years. It's just a little bit of Elmer's clear glue, some red food coloring. Um, it kind of looks like jello at first. I added a little bit of blue food coloring and then actually some red acrylic paint, and just to get it a little less see-through. Um, a little less translucent and that gave me an amazing blood color i tested this out first on my halloween kills uh, trick or treat studios knife because i just wanted to see how the color would look and everything and when it comes to plastic props you can actually peel this off pretty easily but i found with the latex masks this works absolutely amazing for the blood and you can see on the knife once that does stick it is pretty permanent and it looks very realistic and it stays wet 
So I started by just really painting on the indent, and there are a lot of different variations on how people are painting the blood effect. I really like this thing with Nick, um, I can't pronounce his last name right now, I remember off the top of my head, but I'll definitely link his stuff. He has some great videos. I kind of tried to uh, replicate what he did with his blood effect where he has it dripping down the face a little bit. In the actual movie, it does look like um, the blood kind of smears a little bit all over that one area because it's been, you know, rained on with the... Uh, the fireman, but I did want to have it look like it was still fresh, like he just kind of crawled out of that um, the basement. So I kind of add, tried to add some drip effects, and luckily this blood did stay looking super, super um, moist, I guess you should say, probably the worst word. Uh, and then when it came to the hair, I did copy what Cosplay Chris did, because I thought this was an awesome effect. Just mix up some like latex and um, black paint, and I went over and painted over the hair again just to mat it down and make it look a little more burnt to match the more burnt uh, face that I was able to get. And this was able to uh, kind of help blend everything a little bit better and make it look a little more realistic. When it came to the hair, the hair did need to be poofed up just a little bit. I, the masks always come way too with the hair matted down. He kind of does have a little bit of a quaff in the center where the burn starts. So I just added a little bit of hairspray and tried to just tough up the hair right in the front and kind of make it look a little poofier. I think the awesome effect on this mask is they did add a little bit of white onto the standard part of the hair to make it look like there's ash in there. Um, but I did have a lot of bald spots in this mask. As you can see right to where my hand is, um, there's a huge kind of bald spot that I always have to cover up, which I wasn't too happy about. But if I wanted to repair the mask, I definitely could. Here is the finished product of the mask in dark lighting. It looks terrifying in my opinion. And there's that blood completely dry. It still looks wet to this day. I really do like the effect that gives. Um, here is it outside. I'm sorry that the footage is on its side. I don't know why it loaded in like that. Um, in natural lighting, it is a little bit more green. And there you can see that yellow underneath the burnt areas. That actually looks very close to the replication. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do subscribe. I'm trying to get a few more videos out for the Halloween season, but this was my biggest priority. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.